Yeah, my name is Paul Hundo. I'm, I've been a director with SPEC for the last 20 years. I've recently retired from SPEC, um, but I've had a long-term involvement with them in various issues involving protecting water quality in Greater Vancouver and now focusing on air quality. You know, we're very lucky in BC. You know, we have such clean air. And Vancouver is one of the best cities in the world to live in because we're different. And we're not going to keep what we have by going down the road and doing what everybody else has done in the past. Now, they've said that in Europe, they use these uh, incinerators for burning garbage. Well, Europe's hardly what we should be using as an example of where we're going. Because I've been to Europe, and the air pollution there is horrible compared to here. If we start to do, do what Europe's done just because they've done it, and we end up with heavy air pollution, you know, we're not becoming the greenest city in the world. We're, going, we're starting to make the mistakes that everybody else has done and end up with the problems that so many other cities have of serious air pollution problems. You know, every marijuana smoker understands the concept that when you breathe in chemicals, it gets into your body very quickly. You know, a marijuana smoker will smoke a puff of marijuana, and within less than a minute, the THC, the chemicals inside that smoke, get into the bloodstream and right to the brain. Less than a minute. Well, your body doesn't discriminate between things you want in your body and things you don't want. So when you breathe in air pollution, it is getting into your lungs and throughout your body just like the things that you smoke and so that is why we need to take special care and treat differently the type of toxins that we put into the air furthermore when you put the garbage into the air we are all exposed to it and and there's no way of uh, stopping how far it spreads in fact polar bears and animals off the Arctic are found to have chemical compounds in their system that they've gotten which aren't even don't even exist in the Arctic except through air pollution. In other words, they're finding these um, chemical compounds created from industry thousands of miles away in the Arctic, far away from any smokestack. And that's how far air pollution travels. That's why we need to take air pollution so seriously. BC has the lowest cancer rate in Canada, and that's something we need to protect. And we protect it by having the cleanest water, which we now have through filtration and protection of water sources when we drink our water. We need to protect our air quality. The nature of cancer is it doesn't carry a tag with it that says this, is, this cancer was caused by one particular chemical or one particular incident you know, from smoking. We infer it. We know that dioxins cause cancer. We know other things cause cancer. People get it. And so when people get it, you can infer that they might have got it from smoking or they might have got it from something else. But you can't prove it. Whenever, if anyone you know who's had cancer, I'm sure they didn't know what caused that their particular cancer. And of course, tobacco industry scientists for decades were exploiting that fact, the fact that cancer doesn't carry a tag on it that says where it came from. And as a result, for years, tobacco industry scientists will be able to honestly say with some indignation, there's not a single documented case of a person ever proven to have gotten cancer from smoking. They can make that statement. They can make that statement to today, right till today, that there's not a single documented case because you cannot say that particular cancer case was caused by smoking or by dioxins. And so the same thing holds true now. The GVRD can say there's not a single documented case of a person getting cancer from dioxins. Well, that's because of the nature of cancer. You can't prove it. That doesn't mean that it does. people aren't getting it or will get it. And that is why, the, as far as environmental impacts, that it's a, for me it's a no-brainer that uh, incineration should not be the solution. You know, there's an effort to make Vancouver the greenest city. And the best way for us to clean the air is to not start putting our garbage in the air and to 
do everything possible to keep emissions to a minimum in this region. 